Howdy everybody, David Minkin here, starting player with Connect More, and welcome to a special video review, because today I'm not reviewing a board game, but instead I'm reviewing a component of a board game. And in particular, today I'm reviewing Draw Lab Entertainment's legendary metal coin set, which is due out on Kickstarter in March 2015. Now, if you follow my actual board game reviews, you'll note that whenever it comes to components, I generally have a generic statement that I say, I don't really discuss components, unless of course the component is so good that it elevates the gameplay above and beyond the actual mechanics and the rule book and what's going on the table itself. If it enhances the game experience so much then I'll talk about the component or if on the other side if the component actually takes away from the gameplay if it's so bad that it actually distracts from the gameplay then I'll mention it as well but generally a lot of components are somewhere in between they're doing what they're supposed to do so I don't discuss them at all I don't make it a point in my reviews so how am I qualified to actually give a review of a component in this case the metal coins well like I said if a component elevates the gameplay experience to a higher level then it's worth talking about and metal coins for me do that now when we start talking about metal coins I'm going to get into the actual metal coins of Draw Lab Entertainment and what they're offering on Kickstarter don't worry but before we get there let's have a little discussion about well why metal coins because that was a question I had about up to about a year ago. I never understood why. And the reason why is to me there's an opportunity cost with an upgrade for metal coins. Because they're generally not a very cheap upgrade. They're generally more on the expensive side. And so then when I looked at metal coins, I go, oh, wait a second. I can already do that. The game comes with these components for me. By me buying these metal coins, I'm essentially, the opportunity cost of doing that is costing me another game or two. So uh, until about a year ago, I kind of pushed it off. I said, no, metal coins are not for me. And okay, that might be a fair, fair point. But then two games came across my plate this year where I didn't have a choice. They came with metal coins. The first game was Black Fleet. Now Black Fleet comes with a set of silver and gold metal coins. They're here in this little baggie here. But if you have the game, you know what I'm talking about. And my sons, I, I have uh, three kids. Um, two of them are really big into tabletop uh, games. And uh, my sons were just love Black Fleet. And they love taking the coins. They love clanging them around. And they love the feel of the coins. And the game experience for them actually became elevated and it was just like wow the these components are fantastic now I'm not going to complain about the components because they were they, it was great it's over the top but if I could improve the components of Black Fleet the, um, the metal coins in low light um, it's hard to see or even sometimes the way that lights um, shining it's hard to differentiate the difference between the gold coin and the silver coin and to make matters even worse the imprint on uh, both the gold and the silver is exactly the same so it's very difficult sometimes to determine one coin from the other so then if I was sitting there I'm like wow these metal coins are great but I wish I had a slightly different set, something a little bit different you know because you're always looking for something different but I, I don't want to complain about that I'm not going to dwell on that so it enhanced the game experience for my, for my kids. Then we fast forward a little bit, and on Kickstarter, I kickstarted uh, Viticulture with the Tuscany expansion, and that came with a, uh, a set of coins, really heavy coins. They come in three different denominations, I believe. Um, they, they got a good clang to them, and again, here's the here's the box itself here. Um, Stonemeyer Games just does an excellent job uh, with their components. And so then here again, I'm like, wow, I, I got the upgrade for the metal coins, fantastic. and I played this game with my wife and instantly like, we felt like we were playing a higher class game. We felt like we were playing a game about wine. We pour a little bit of wine. We got the metal coins. They're clanging around. When you're buying stuff, you have that feel. You, it, it does that extra step to actually immerse you into the gaming experience. And those two games over the past year, I'm like, wow, yes, metal coins, like, th these are phenomenal. It just takes that experience to a whole new level and helps with the immersion. So for me, that's why metal coins. Why are some other reasons why you might choose to upgrade some of your games with a metal coin set? Well, for starters, one thing we all like to replace are these paper bills here. This is one of the main complaints I'll actually see in Board Game Geek is whenever a game comes 
comes with paper bills, people are like, ah, no more paper bills. Couldn't they at least gotten chits? Well, then you can say, well, couldn't you at least got metal coins? And I've laid out some games here where I'll show where metal coins would make a, a good su substitution. And part of the reason why you don't like paper bills is because there's no wow factor. Whereas the metal coins where you're clanking them, people can hear them across the room. They walk by your game and they see them laid out there. It has a wow factor, like, whoa. And so sometimes it's got what I call great curb appeal or what real estate people would call curb appeal. The, it improves the curb appeal of your game. So if you're actually trying to bring people into the hobby, well then the metal coins are something flashy and shiny that has great curb appeal for people to actually be drawn into any particular game. And the metal coins themselves are unlike other component upgrades as well. These are the Cadillac upgrade. I'm going to just look at a couple old Kickstarters, not the particular one that I'm going to do the review for, but let's take a look at what's happening right now, the Age of Empires 3 Kickstarter. The metal coins is one of the stretch goals, but I don't believe it occurred till about $200,000 raised. So it was a Cadillac upgrade to occur. And so there's other upgrades that you can have within a game of cardstock, uh, board, you know, you name it, different uh, um, uh, pieces, different pawns, better dice, what have you. But the neat thing about um, metal coins, especially if you get them as a upgrade, is that they're also fairly generic. And so when you actually invest in a metal coin set, you're not investing in just one game as what some other upgrades are only doing, like customized meeples or whatever. You can maybe use them for other games, but the coins themselves, you can start using them across different games that maybe share the same feel or the same genre. And that's what makes metal coins, not only are they that Cadillac, um, experience that's brought to the table, but it's an experience that can be spread across your game collection as well, so that although it is a more of an expensive upgrade that you typically would be spending, then perhaps by spreading it across more games that the cost per play will actually go down if that's the way you want to think about it. And finally, since we are talking about all these different genres, the cool thing about the coins that I'm about to show you is that within this Kickstarter I believe there's 11 different sets or a dozen or so different sets all with different themes associated with them so you can pick a theme or a genre that fits your own game collection or you can mix and match them as well and have a little bit of fun and actually change the experience a little bit with some of your games and I'm going to show you some games which I intend to do that with. So now that we have discussed, well, why metal coins, hopefully I've given you a few key points that might resonate with you as to why you might want to consider incorporating metal coins into your gaming collection and into your gaming experience. We need now discuss about the actual Draw Lab Entertainment coins and about this particular Kickstarter that I've been asked to do the review for. Now the first question you probably have for me is, well, what's the cost? Now that's a great question and the cost of course is going to vary depending on the number of coins that you want to buy. Now the way that the coins are being sold is they're being sold in sets and each set is consisting of 10 bronze eight silver and six gold coins for a total of 24 coins and they say they sell them from anywhere from one set up to four sets and the price will range anywhere from 79 cents to 72 cents a coin you can also buy a custom set which is basically one coin of every coin that they made so you get one of everything and uh, that's going to be a dollar a coin and you can add as many coins as you want for an additional dollar so you might say okay so what am I getting? Well, all of these coins are made of a zinc alloy. And again, I'm just using the information that's available to me on the preview of the Kickstarter. And these coins are big. They are huge. They are clunky. I'm going to show you zoomed in pictures of each of the coins in each of the set. And I'm going to compare them to an American quarter, not only in their diameter, but also in their thickness. Because I'm going to show you a, a stack of three of the coins. And I stack the coins again by denomination, by bronze, silver, and gold. And I'm going to put it right next at the same scale of a stack of three American quarters as well and generally I'm going to spoiler alert is generally these coins are about one and a half times thicker than an American quarter and they are much larger in diameter and that's generally true for all sets and for all denominations as well but I'm going to show you each set that I was given up close and personal so that you can make a decision for yourself as to how big they are so now let's go back to cost now I said that the cost per coin is going to be in the 70 cent range, 72 to 79 cents per coin. And again, we, we have that custom set, which is a dollar a coin, but we'll talk about that later because that's more for collectors or for people who want to do something different with them outside of board games, in my opinion. We'll talk about that. So for that price, how does that compare to other metal coins? Well, I went back and looked at some other Kickstarters and some other things that I got metal coins with and compared them. So for example, take a look at Age of Empires 3, 
again a Kickstarter that's occurring right now. Their metal coins, from what I could figure out, were 20 cents a coin. Now I have no idea of the quality of the, the, the coin, the size of the coin, the materials used, I don't I know any of that, but it was 20 cents a coin. Let's go back to Viticulture. I mentioned before that I got these coins here through Viticulture, and these are extremely well done, uh, great quality. What was the cost here? Well, it was $15 for 72 additional coins. I believe you could get that as an upgrade when you get the Kickstarter. And that works out to be 21 cents a coin. So that's in about the same ballpark of the Age of Empires. Now, if we rewind a few years, there was another coin Kickstarter um, that happened in uh, September 2013, I believe, and it was done by Conquistador, and uh, there they had a bunch of different, a very similar style of Kickstarter that uh, Draw Lab Entertainment is doing right now, and uh, their coins averaged from what I could tell from the very cheapest option was 20 cents a coin. Now again there was differences there and I don't have any of those coins to actually give you a physical comparison but what the summary here is other metal coins are going for between 20 to 25 cents a coin in other different Kickstarters whereas these ones again are in the 70 cent range. So you are paying a Cadillac price for the Draw Lab Entertainment coins. Now the question you gotta ask yourself is it worth paying that price for the quality that you're going to pay because if you are paying a Cadillac price I fully expect you to drive off the lot with a Cadillac and my answer my short answer is yes so let's get into the details of the actual quality now that you're paying for so that you can again decide if paying that extra price compared again I'm making a very unfair comparison because I do not have these other coins to show you except for the Viticulture ones and again the Viticulture ones um, what makes them different than the coins that are available in the Kickstarter is to me these are very specific coins they have a, a V on them some grapes in them. They're very specific to kind of a winemaking theme. I do not see myself using these coins in any other game. It just, it's just not, uh, it's not something I would do. I don't feel that I have any other games that really would warrant this type of coin. So they're quite specific. Whereas again, these Draw Lab Entertainment ones, they're more generic. They're generic in the fact that again, each set comes in three different colors, bronze, silver, and gold, and none of these coins actually have a denomination written on them. So you can make up the denomination that you want depending on what game that you're playing. Now some people might actually see that as a con because some of these games in which where I'm trying to actually replace the coins for, there's a lot of denominations that come with the game itself. So you might want the ability to actually add a fourth or a fifth coin type within a set so that you can actually be more flexible and have different denominations. And that's one thing that might be view it as a con for these, whereas I view it as a pro because with these three different sets, is uh, three different colors without the denominations, I'm able to be more generic about my use with the actual coin. Now the dimensions of the coins I've already mentioned we're going to show on some pictures, but also let's talk a little bit about heft. How do these feel in your hand? And basically the best way I can describe this is be like holding maybe a, a couple golf balls like with the heft. They, they are heavy coins because they are large, they're oversized, and they are thick. And so um, Yes, well, another uh, pro or con of these um, coins is in fact most of the coins within each set are fairly uniform uh, diameter. There's not a lot of change. It's not like you have small coins and bigger coins. They're all quite large. But some people prefer when they're playing with different coins to have smaller coins for smaller denominations and bigger coins for bigger denominations, which is not unlike real currency or real coins that you see in every day. The pennies and dime are quite small, quarters a little bit bigger. Whereas here, the nice thing about having within each set, each coin roughly about the same diameter and thickness, is they stack very well. So these coins themselves stack very nicely, and uh, they have a... In they basically, the best way I can describe them is they're like a poker chip. They're about the same height and, and thickness of a good quality poker chip. And so there's, a, again, a nice table presence where you can stack them and other people can be intimidated by how you're dominating a particular game, for example. The other thing that I really like about talking about how generic these coins are is that the engravings are fantastic and they are different for every coin. So the bronze is different from the silver, different from the gold. So therefore, if you're playing with a colorblind person or 
or if the lighting is maybe a little bit off and you're having some difficulty discriminating perhaps say silver from gold or gold from bronze because some of these sets some of the colors run a little bit close like but when you put them side by side no problem is because of the different engravings then there'll be no issue for a colorblind person with these coins regardless of the lighting that may be occurring and going back to the heft it was funny I was asking on board game geek on, on my blog I was kind of asking like well what do you want to know when I start talking about these coins and uh, one person who's quite funny is Tony Boydell actually he said he's like I want to know if they can be used as a weapon and here's the thing is these coins here indeed so as a pro if you are a violent player and you get angry violently angry when you play you're really upset these indeed can be used as a weapon so that might be used as a pro for some of you but for others of you who play with those types of players and you don't want to get you know lose your eye over a game don't bring these out because indeed these got enough heft and weight that they could be used as a weapon. Similarly, if you like to play in your barefoot, your sock foot, and I'm speaking to you, Rado, is um, these would hurt if these fell off the table and hit you on the toe without your, you know, your barefoot. They would hurt. And so just try to give you a few little senses the heft of these actual coins. So I hope you do not mind me taking the time to have this discussion with you. I know for me, when it comes time to talk about component upgrades, I need to have a few basic questions answered about that component upgrade because there is that opportunity cost, as I've mentioned, about whether or not you actually keep filling up the shells behind me or whether or not I'm just replacing the bits and pieces inside the boxes that are already on the shelf. So again, if for me it was very important to talk about, well, why metal coins in the first place? And if you know the answer to that, well, then the next question obviously was, well, why draw lab entertainment coins? And I hope I gave you enough decision points, which is always my goal for a Kickstarter preview video, so that you can make the decision whether or not you want to look further into the coin sets themselves. So now let's get started. I'm going to show you the in detail close-up pictures of all seven sets that were provided to me. We're going to go in alphabetical order. And the other thing I'm going to add to my review is when you're looking at the pictures, I am going to do three things that are audible things so you can kind of get the clangity clang clang of the coins and get a sense for how they are. First thing you're going to hear is you're going to hear me rub the coins together. And just as an example, I'm going to do that right now with an American quarter. So here right now I'm going to rub them together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coins and I'm going to shake them in my hand like this. So you can kind of get a feeling for how they might sound in your hand. And I'm going to do that right now with three American quarters. And then finally, I'm going to take two of the coins and I'm going to drop them on a granite countertop. Just so you can hear that ping and just get a, a sense if it's got a metallic sound or a thudding sound or how lively the coin might be. So let's do that with some American quarters. Great. So then I'm going to do that with each set when you're actually looking at the set itself. So hopefully it'll make the coin a little bit more live and be a little bit more, have a little bit more presence for you. Because you can always look at pictures anywhere else. I want them to kind of pop out a little bit for you so you can get a feeling for the actual energy that these coins actually have within them. So let's get started. So first off, we got the Arabic coins. Now these coins are just simply gorgeous. I don't know if they say anything on them or if they're just fancy designs, um, but they are really quite stunning. And even when you rub your hand across them, you can just feel the individual engravings. And that's actually true for all the coins that are in the set. And they got a good heft to them. So let's hear what they sound like when I rub them together. And let's hear what they sound like when I clang them around in my hand. And finally, let's just drop a couple on the table. And there you have the sound of the Arabic coins. Now here, we're looking at the picture for the first time that I've got set up here for you. I'm showing all three coins from bronze, silver, and gold from left to right, both sides, top and bottom. And then you'll notice over on the right hand side, I got the American quarter for scale. And all of these pictures were taken at the same scale. And then finally at the bottom, I've stacked all three of the Arabic coins that I have in order from bronze, silver, and gold. And I stacked them relative to three American quarters over on the bottom right hand side. So again you can see that the difference in stack height is quite amazing. So what games might you use these type of coins for? Well you could use them for Camel Up, the Spiel de Jari's winner. Uh, they would make an excellent uh, experience there you know with the camel racing you could use them for that. The other uh, game that pops to mind again is uh, Safranito where you have that terrible paper money so you could actually use these coins instead of the, the paper money. Moving on we got the Capital Coin set. Now I really enjoy this coin 
looking set because the look and feel of these is they're just regal, they're posh, they're royal. They're, they can be used for any number of games, Euro games that you actually are playing, you know, medieval times. Uh, they got the uh, the crown there, they got the fleur de lis on a couple of the, the uh, coins there. And again, you see that again, they're oversized coins. You can compare them to the American stack and the American quarter themselves. Uh, they have a real good feel to them. And I'm sure it really wouldn't take a lot of imagination to think of a few games where you can actually use some medieval style uh, coins that are regal and royal. Uh, just off the top of my head, you could use um, Kalis, uh, even Colbaron. You know, Colbaron's got those awful green notes to them. You could actually use uh, use these. But I, I'd almost feel bad using these in Colbaron, honestly, because I think on the notes, the actual designer's faces are on them. So I think that would be kind of, you know, sacrilege to the designers. But I'm sorry, these coins are just, uh, just too good. So I'm sure you can think of a bunch of other ones, too. You could even use these, say, Palaces of Carrara. Now, I know that's set in Italy, but, uh, but you know, these just feel like they feel like I'm, you know, building castles. It, like, it feels appropriate for me to use uh, these coins for that. So why don't we rub these coins together and have a little listen? And now let's just clang them around in our hands so that we can see how annoying we can be to our other players when we're trying to think. And finally, let's drop a, let's drop a couple of these on the table. So next up we have the Dwarven coin, coin set. And this coin set, what I really like about this one are these, uh, these different amounts of edges, these octagonal coins, and I believe this other, the uh, actual gold coin's got 10 sides on it. And uh, I just love the patterns on here. And I also really enjoy the axes. Like it just, with I see the axes, I start thinking of course like dwarves and, and trolls and I think of like an underworld. And so any game that you have that uh, actually um, incorporates that, like Terra Mystica for example, that would be a great one to use for this. Uh, Small World, that's another one that I'm thinking of. There's just a lot of variability if you like that style of game that you could actually use this for. And again, you see these are all all very oversized uh, coins and the silver and the bronze coins are both eight sided and the gold coin is the one with the extra two sides. So why don't we give them a little rub together and let's hear the clangity clang clang when I shake them in my hand. And finally let's just drop a couple on the table. Now moving on to the Elven coin set. Now this coin set and the Dwarven coin set, for me, I can kind of use these interchangeably between uh, different games. Because again, you got these whimsical, these really cool designs. Um, the Elven coin set, it seems like it's got more, um, uh, if you look at the gold one, for example, there's a star there with different uh, different things. Kind of reminds me like kind of more of a Ouija board or something. You know, like it, it reminds me of we're going into a different world now. We're going into like a different kind of a fantasy space again. So any game that you might use like for a fantasy space you can use. But you know what uh, game that pops out to my mind for these coin sets in fact, which is not really in a, um, a fantasy world, is uh, uh, Teal Fristo's uh, Shadow Throne. And that was a game I, uh, I kick-started, I did a review video for it. And that's a game where you got basically a king, a queen, and their daughter, and they're all fighting it out for the throne. And I always feel like I could be someplace different there. And so this is just another example of these coins. There's so universal that I, I could use these coins there as uh, the currency to actually buy uh, power and influence throughout the game. So, and again, these could also be used for Small World and Terra Mystica as well, or any number of games where basically you go into a new fantasy type of world. Next up, we got the Greek coin set, and I have to tell you, this is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite coin set of the ones that I've received, and I'll tell you why. Look, Take a look at the edges there. You can see it in the stack, and you can also see them uh, just on the pictures. They're, they're not regular. They're smooth, worn down. They're smooth. Like they, they feel ancient. When I hold these coins, they just feel ancient to me, and you see that we got the Athena owl on there, and uh, it's just... Um, 
they did such a great job with these and you, you see even on the bronze coin there you see that the wreath itself that wraps around the coin it shows that it's worn off on the one side like the the attention to detail is amazing and in fact just for these coins alone I want to go buy more Greek themed uh, coin sets because these ones here they, they just feel so authentic and so uh, why don't we give a listen to how they rub together and now let's just clang them in our hands And whoops, I dropped a couple. Now what games could you actually play with this coin set? Well, Colosseum, that's a perfect game you could play with this set. And uh, somebody on my Facebook page also recommended, hey, you know what? These would make really good score tokens for Polis, Fight for the Hegemony. And I was, yes, because Polis is definitely one of my all-time favorite games. And to use something like this, so not only as a currency for different games, but as a score trackers for some of the games that are Greek-themed. And that could be for any of these other coins as well. Um, fantastic. And you can see that these coins, in fact, are smaller in diameter a little bit compared to some of the other sets but that's okay because they've been worn down and uh, yeah like they really feel like the authentic deal so uh, those are the Greek coins and now let's move on to the pirate coin set now this is a set that my kids want me to get because they would love to have this set in different games they would love to use these coins to replace the black fleet coins because the black fleet coins are basically the size of a, an american dime maybe slightly bigger and so if you again you look at this picture and you see that these coins just overshadow the american quarter that i have them referenced against like these if you're digging for treasure if you found uh, some booty out on the beach well that didn't sound very good I mean some captain's treasure out on the beach well then uh, these would be the types of coins that you would you would go and, and uh, show off like, these are massive coins and the other thing I like about these coins is they have the most metallic sound of all the coins I was asked to review which is appropriate this is what I feel I want the clangity clang of my pirate treasure so why don't we rub a few of them together now let's give them a little shake like we just are walking with their treasure to go buy ourselves a new parrot to maybe a new boat so we're walking with a little swagger right now. And finally we dropped a couple on the street but who cares I got chestfuls of treasure back on my boat you can keep it. So these are the pirate coins and the pirate coins themselves are really cool because of the thing I like about them is they didn't just focus on skull and crossbones. Of course there's two of them on there but they're totally different styles. One's got the swords that are crossing for this um, crossbones and the other one is just basically looks like death which is the actual bones crossing over. But then they also got the one on the silver coin there you see the pirate said it's like an octopus beard coming out there so it's like a different I'm sure you know you could take this coin and talk of some some legend some medieval pirate that haunts the seas and so there's just a lot of um, really neat uh, details to the coins you see the the uh, the boat on the one and then you also looks like the navigation or the compass on like the gold coin so there's a lot of different uh, uh, choices that you can have here and for pirate themed games oh there's a bunch you got Libertalia you got Merchants and Marauders you got Jamaica um, you got again Black Fleet you you name it so there's a lot of versatility with these pirate tokens so those are the pirate tokens and finally for my review I got the steampunk tokens. Now these tokens themselves are really neat because they have uh, interesting sayings on them. You know, for example, you look at the bronze, it says in very small letters, there it goes, uh, uh, explore, imagine, live. And uh, on the other side, you got like a picture of the, the rivet too. And uh, you got this mechanical wind up bird there and uh, uh, on the silver coin there. And so there's just a lot of gears and, and neat little things that you can imagine an inventive world a steampunk world a gear a world full of gears and so there's a variety of games that you could actually use with this one as well and the one that I want to use it for is Steam Park because Steam Park comes with just little tiny bank notes that are little cardboard bank notes which are terrible which is these here I could use for Steam Park and be quite uh, quite neat to use for that so why don't we give a little listen to how they rub together now let's just shake them in our hand a little bit And finally, whoops, dropped a couple. 
So there you have it. I've talked about all seven coin sets that were provided to me. I hope those pictures were meaningful to you and that helped you make more of a decision. And I talked about some games that these might be appropriate for. But what's really neat about this is I can also think of a lot of games where everything gets mixed together. Take another one of my favorite games, Madeira. Now Madeira is really cool because you know you're this Portuguese island on Madeira and you're 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 settling it and you got money to, to spend there. But there's also pirate tokens that are used there. Now pirate tokens are not really a good thing in the game but you could still use the pirate tokens from the coins and then you could use the other coins you can maybe use the capital set which is a little bit more regal again to kind of represent uh, you know the money and the currency that you're using there or there are times where you actually got to send your boats off to the colonies well why not take different types of coins that represent the colonies you can do that and it doesn't matter because again as long as you keep the denominations the same of the bronze silver and the gold then you can just mix the coins whatever and put some in some colonies and some come from other colonies so that way you can go I've sent my wine to India and for my troubles I'm getting some some rupees or I'm getting these coins and it might be different than the coins that somebody else gets from another colony and then at the end you just count up whether it's bronze silver or gold so you can do that and another game that uh, would work really well for this that I again another game I love fire and axe is that one you're going out and you're pillaging you're settling you're um, you're trading all around the Mediterranean and up in the, the Scandinavian countries there and, and beyond well then Put different coin sets on different areas for if you're trading them. And again, just keep the denominations the same. And then you're, it's great because you can talk about your adventures in far off lands with all your different coins. And so you can do that. And another one would be Archipelago. You could do that as well for that. Any of these kind of trading and adventure type games, you can start mixing it, things together and you can actually enrich your experience with these components. So I've talked way too long about this. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please come Come find me on Facebook, Connect More Board Games, or on YouTube, subscribe. I normally do board game reviews. I do two types. I do Avoid the Rules, which stands for a video of instruction and demonstration that helps ease rule understanding and learning easy start. So that's where I tackle big games and try to get at the core of how it all works. And I also do another set of reviews with my Tiny Table Toppers called 3TV, the tabletop view of Tiny Table Toppers, where I play games with the kids because they don't lie. So you can see if games work or will work with you and your family. So that's pretty much all I have to say. The only one other thing I'm going to add is I wish that there was more sets um, to the actual Draw Lab Entertainment Kickstarter because one game that I find that I have a lot of but I didn't really find a set that really worked was kind of like the American Midwest, um, uh, Wild Wild West um, era like I would like maybe you have some coins with buffalo on them. I know there's an old American nickel with buffalo on it or something like, like that kind of feeling and it also wouldn't mind kind of a Scandinavian or kind of a Norse kind of feeling um, as well but uh, please check out their Kickstarter page they got other ones they got a dragon set a sci-fi set a uh, Far East set which again I'm very interested in because you can uh, all kinds of games you can use that for the one I really want to use it for is Edo because that which is you know, kick it up a notch, a great game, even higher. So I encourage you to go check out their Kickstarter page, and if you have any questions, comments, or other games that you think might work with these coins, please leave a comment below. I would love to have that conversation with you, but most importantly, go check out the Kickstarter if any of this resonated at all with you. So until next time, cheers and happy gaming.